Hey, welcome back, guys. I thought I'd do a, a follow-up to my PC build video and um, also rant a little bit about motherboards. Um, let me tell you what happened. Now, of course, when I decided to build this ATX um, computer, I wanted to use an ATX motherboard because it gives me uh, multiple slots for RAM, it gives me multiple slots for PCI cards. You get a lot more flexibility with adding internal Wi-Fi uh, graphics cards, things like that. <clears throat> and if you use the right case, it'll give you enough room inside to build it easily without uh, cramming everything in. Now I picked a mid tower case, and it had pretty good room but the problem is that the depth of the case was such that behind the motherboard there wasn't a lot of room for cables and when I made the video I showed you that I had a pretty thick cable coming off my power supply and that was just not able to fit behind the motherboard so it makes cable management a lot more challenging and um, it makes the overall build a little more challenging than it should be. Uh, so, again, that's on me. If I had it to do over again, I think I would have gone with maybe a full tower rather than a mid tower because it would have given me plenty of room inside for everything that I wanted to do and also make it look a little bit neater because I would have room to put all the cables behind the motherboard. But live and learn that's the case I have and I'll make do. The second issue was <clears throat> what motherboard would I use? Now this is where I get into my rant a little bit. What I don't understand is why when you have a um, slightly older generation CPU and a new generation CPU comes out New, new motherboards come out adapting to that new CPU version. What happens is as the older version um, which my my CPU is an uh, i7 4790K um, <clears throat> which is not that old it's a Haswell um, so it's not the latest and greatest but what happens is the motherboards for that LGA 1150 slot CPU motherboard availability goes down the tubes now I needed a motherboard that would take my my CPU and would also accommodate uh, running Mac OS 10. I wanted to build a Hackintosh, so I wanted to have a triple boot. I wanted Linux, I wanted Windows, and I wanted OS 10. So I went looking for a motherboard. Now, in the past, I've told you about the Tony Mac x86 site. If you're thinking about building a Hackintosh, this is the Bible. This is where you go. This is this has all the information. It's uh, really, there's nothing else like it. So I pulled up the older version of the recommended motherboards and I started going down the list to see whether Amazon or Newegg had the motherboard. And it was extremely challenging. Um, so if you click on, you'll see it's only available from these sellers and then you click on that and it's a used board and that happens pretty much down the line now I like gigabyte motherboards I that's what I prefer so that's where I went looking first and I was not able to find anything neither Amazon nor Newegg had anything available that would be for an 1150 I was looking for an 1150 uh, series CPU and I was looking for the ALC 892 sound uh, module so it, 
but no matter which one I went to, because I was, as long as it was compatible with building a Hackintosh, I was fine with it. But it had to be the 1150. I did not want to go buy another processor. So, um, uh, and I'm referring to the wrong 1150 here. It's the it's the uh, chipset that I was most concerned with. So if you click on one of these, you see this LGA 1150? And I refer to the ALC 1150, which was wrong. ALC 1150 is the sound. But the LGA 1150 is the chipset. That's what I absolutely needed. Now, I wanted the ALC 892 for sound, but I would have taken any of these because uh, there are drivers available for all of them. So the big thing was the chipset eleven had to be an 1150 slot. So I went all the way down the list and started clicking on Amazon and Newegg, see if I could find any gigabytes in the ATX. It had to be the ATX form factor. So I went down the list, couldn't find anything. Then I went into my second pick, which I had used before, which was the ASRock. So I went down all the ASRocks and I couldn't find anything. So what what happens is Amazon and Newegg, when the new CPUs come out, they start stocking the new motherboards. And that's what they buy and stock their shelves with. So consequently, if you have a slightly older generation CPU, it's a struggle to find um, motherboards for it uh, available on either Amazon or Newegg. So I couldn't find any ASRocks. Well, the only thing I was able to find is the ASUS. Um, couldn't find any MSIs. I had never used MSIs, but I would have. So what happened was I ended up finding at Newegg a uh, ASUS Z97-A USB 3.1, and that's what I ended up using. Now, let me tell you the problem with that. And again, I checked the reviews online, um, and they were fine. Once I built it, I realized the, this, the Asus motherboard, this one here is the only one I can speak about, but I understand it's, it's also affecting other Asus boards. Um, it has a, a problem, an inherent problem. There's nothing wrong with the motherboard per se. I am booted up into it right now. And as you can see, my uh, Zubuntu install is flawless. Everything is absolutely perfect. I've got Wine. I've got Battle.net. I've got Steam. Um, nothing no problems at all with the operation end. The problem comes into when you're dual booting or in my case triple booting and when you hit the hotkey as you're booting up once you hear that post chime um, you hit the hotkey to enter the BIOS and what, when you go into the BIOS to change your uh, boot selection, let's say you want to boot Mac OS X, or, or you want to boot Windows 7, or you want to boot Linux, when you go into the BIOS, it's hit or miss on the BIOS. And what was happening to me was, after going back and forth between Windows and OS 10 and Linux the BIOS would freeze and so what I would have to do is take both panels off the case pull out the jumper to clear the CMOS then I would have to pull the battery out of the motherboard 
and then disconnect all of the internal drives. Let it sit for about 15 minutes, put everything back in, and then boot and it would go to the default BIOS where I, ha I would have to reconfigure the BIOS. As you can imagine, that's a real pain. Now, that happened to me the first time I said, well, let's see what, what's going on. And I got everything back to normal. As, I, as you can see, I have it back to normal here now. But I found that this was happening after every few times um, hitting the BIOS to, to, to go in and select a different boot option. Well, for someone like me who does a lot of multi-booting, that's totally unacceptable. So on a long-term basis, I cannot use this motherboard. Now, the prob as I did a little more investigation, when I went onto the internet and I googled uh, the problem. That's when I started seeing so many other users with the same issue. Now, if you're the type of person who just loads up Linux and leaves it and uses it day after day and doesn't have to go into the BIOS, you're fine. But if you're doing a lot of multi-booting and you're going into the BIOS to make changes, um, it's going to bite you. It's going to lock up. The BIOS will, will lock up and you have no choice but to go in, pull the battery, pull, pull the jumper, jump the CMOS, uh, pull all your drives, or disconnect all your drives. It's the craziest thing. So after struggling with this now for the last week or so, um, I, this is just a motherboard that I cannot live with. So I am going to have to look to see if I can find either a Gigabyte or an ASRock motherboard and make the change. Um, so lesson learned, in this case, you guys can, can benefit from my mistakes. Um, if you're looking for a case with a, with a, a lot of room for wire or cable management, the case that I used um, is not the one to use and I think it was a Corsair R100 let me double check yeah it was a Corsair Carbide Series 100R silent edition now the silent edition as I mentioned when I did the video it has some soundproofing inside the case um, but it's not as quiet as I thought it would be now there is a three-way fan switch which I am now using and I've got the fans on low and as you can see um, while making this video my CPU temperature is about 47 to 50 degrees centigrade uh, or Celsius um, so that is uh, that's acceptable now when I render a video using OpenShot um, it jumps up it, the other day it went up to a hundred which I believe my uh, water cooler is getting a little bit less efficient and so uh, because it is three plus years old I may end up replacing it but that's the subject for another video so um, now as you can see I am it's running fine um, and and oh and one more thing I should mention the reason uh, that it's difficult booting into your USB your uh, boot your BIOS is that if you're using a uh, wireless keyboard and mouse the little USB dongle that you plug in the Asus motherboards don't always recognize it during the boot process so here you are trying to press the 
the hotkey on your keyboard to get into the BIOS it's just not recognizing it and eventually um, just going in and out of the BIOS real locks up the BIOS what I have to do now to make sure that I go into the BIOS uh, reliably and it works most of the time um, is I have to hook up a USB keyboard not a wireless keyboard and that helps with getting that hot key to uh, work properly and generate that BIOS screen so that's a temporary fix but even using that USB keyboard the BIOS has locked up on me where I've had to go in and basically disconnect my drives pull out the battery and and use the jumper to uh, clear the CMOS so um, that's the story I would have selected a larger uh, full tower instead of a mid tower um, I would have so uh, I would have looked longer and harder to find a gigabyte or an ASRock motherboard um, but it is what it is so I'll <clears throat> I'll get by with it for now uh, to minimize my uh, issues I have cut down to three internal hard drives and if you look at my G parted I've got Linux and this is my uh, Zubuntu install on A B is my Windows 7 install and C is my El Capitan Apple install all three are booting and running perfectly uh, I'm spending most of my time in Linux because that's what I prefer and my Zubuntu install is top-notch this is the 1704 so that's where I'll stay unless I really have to go into the others until I can resolve this I'm not even until I can resolve this I'm not even going to install another version of Linux on this drive so I am uh, using basically Ubuntu um, a Zubuntu uh, until I get this motherboard issue resolved which I should have resolved within a few days um, and then I'll get back to normal so guys that is the build update and my little bit of a rant on the motherboards and their availability once a uh, CPU becomes an older generation so guys thanks for stopping by the channel today please rate comment and subscribe and I will see you soon take care